Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome back to the Thai Expat Daily Show. I'm your host, Kieran Mack, as always, and delighted you've been able to tune in with us yet again for another show. Now, before we do get started, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell so that YouTube will let you know when the next podcast, live stream, or show is lo- uploaded on the platform. Now, if you like listening to us on a podcast player, you can do so by looking down below in the description where you'll find a link that will take you to a vast array of podcast players where the show is hosted. And finally, if you like the show, if you want to support us here on the show, there's two ways you can do it. The first way is to simply become a YouTube channel member. Details down below in the description as always. And the other method is to go to the buymeacoffee.com link in the description and you can donate through there. Now, before we jump into the top four or five stories, um, just a quick update on some of the content this week. Now, I'm going to be doing a video on whether or not foreigners can buy land here in Thailand. And uh, that's going to be coming out in the next few days. I've been doing a lot of research on it because I am fed up to the teeth of listening to expats on TikTok and other places telling people you can buy land. And it's no problem and it's easy to do. I've heard this now coming out of two or three TikTokers who've got a lot of followers who seem to be spouting absolute nonsense. So I'm going to outline exactly this week the law, the regulation, the exact sections of the law that apply to foreigners, and I'm going to put it in a video so people can understand and see exactly. The thing and the issue I have with a lot of these TikTokers out there who say you can buy land in Thailand, when you ask them how, they're as vague as you can be. And normally vagueness means it's not exactly 100% legal. That's what I always get from that. So this week there will be a video and I will outline exactly the law, the sections of the law, how it applies and whether or not you can can or cannot buy land here in Thailand, but that will be during the week. So we're gonna jump into the top stories trending here in Thailand. And the first story that seems to be coming to an end slowly is in relation to Taksin Shinawatra, Taksin to walk free from prison on Sunday. So convicted former Prime Minister Taksin Shinawatra is expected to be released this Sunday as he is on the latest of the 930 prisoners granted parole according to the Justice Minister. The minister said he has already approved a list of prisoners who qualify for parole. The Corrections Department proposed a list of convicts to me for uh, for approval of the 945 prisoners named 930 met the criteria, which include uh, grave illness, being handicapped or being over 70, he said. Taxon is 74 years of age and suffers from a serious illness, which has enabled him to stay in the police general hospital for many months. After being convicted on corruption charges in August last year, he spent only a few hours in prison before being transferred to the hospital. Taxon's youngest daughter, Pei Tung Tarn, who is the leader of the ruling Pua Thai party, said earlier that the family has prepared the Chang Song Kla residence for Taxon after his release. So, as people may or may not know, Taxon came back here in August. It was pretty much, uh, I think, a foregone conclusion what was going on here. I, I think anybody who thought there was going to be something different happening um, are living in cloud cuckoo land. Uh, this was all pre scripted. From the moment he left his beautiful home in Dubai to land here in Thailand, all scripted out. Uh, He arrived here within a week or so. He had got a royal pardon with only a year left on it. He's suddenly in hospital and now he's getting parole and he will be out up in his residence. Now, I heard the prime minister today mention that, you know, he's a free man now. So he'll be able to do Well, He's not actually technically a free man, Mr. Prime Minister. He is on parole with conditions of that parole. But it would be good if the prime minister at least could play along that the law was being followed here in relation to it. I also noticed there was a lot of... um, support or there was a there was a, a group of people protesting outside the general hospital where he's apparently at um complaining about uh how he how leniently he's been treated and uh, to those kind of people i would and they said well if he's released early there's going to be huge protests there's not going to be any huge protests because this has been endorsed by the highest power of this country and they will be told you're not doing anything 
and to let it be because this is what's in the interest of Thailand. And I guess this is, at the end of the day, the conclusion to, you know, 15, 20 years of this tax in Shinawatra tobacco that's been going on here in the country. Um, whether or not he makes a resurgence in politics, who knows? I mean, the, the guy, from my knowledge and speaking to people, because I wasn't a huge follower back in the day, was economically the country never did as well uh, under his, you know, when he was in charge, the country did exceptionally well. So, I mean, he certainly did have positive things going for him. But it, it seems to be the end of this saga, hopefully, because, you know, it's been really dragged out in the paper and the media. And myself, too, I will put up my hand and say I've dragged it out, but it is news. Anyway, we'll move on to the next story. Wednesday deadline for owners of 100 plus SIM cards. The National Broadcast and Telecommunications Commission has warned that owners of 100 plus cards have until February 14 to verify their registration and holders of from 6 to 100 must do so by July 13th. The Telecom Regulation Agency hopes that they will reduce the number of call scams plaguing the country. People failing to meet the deadline will not be able to make outgoing calls on these numbers. They will have another 30 days to comply and then the cards will be permanently cancelled. The Telecom Regulation Agency hopes that this will reduce the number of call scams plaguing the country. Actually, this is particularly a very good idea, and it's not often we come out and say the government have came up with a brilliant idea, but uh, as we know, scams in this country are on the uppity up. Uh, it's pretty much every day that my phone rings three or four times a day with numbers I'd never heard of and people on the other end uh, looking to scam me. As soon as they hear the foreign voice, though, normally they, they hang up pretty quickly, actually. But uh, my wife's had the same issue where she's got a lot of people calling, pretending to be from all kinds of departments. Um, I think one was that they were from the revenue department one time and they were going through all kinds of stuff. They had information on her, which, you know, quite surprised her a lot. Uh, but she knew and she guessed it was a scam. They were calling her on a Sunday. I mean, since when did a revenue department call on a Sunday? And uh, seemed to be from a mobile number. So not the, uh, the brightest sparks either, you know. But uh, I think this will certainly uh, cause some problems for the scammers uh, because they have to obviously register that. But there's always, of course, here in Thailand, there's always a, uh, a work around these things too, if you kind of understand what I mean. Two reporters in police custody over defacing of a royal temple wall. On Monday, a Prachatai reporter and an independent journalist were arrested in connection with the alleged defacing of the temple of the Emerald Buddha walls in Bangkok last March. Nutapo Meksaban from Prachatai and Natapan Pang Pangsanon, an independent photographer, were apprehended, according to the Thai Lawyers for Human Rights, they were covering an event at the temple when an artist sprayed an anti Les Majest law symbol on the wall. Both journalists deny involvement. They are arrested without prior summons and are being held at a different police station, a move deemed unusual. Now, TLHR is providing legal assistance. Editor-in-Chief of the Prachachai Tirawat um, Menikai maintains the journalists were fulfilling their duty. At least 1,938 individuals have been charged with political offences, including 262 facing less majeste charges, according to TLHR. So a bit more about this story, because it's quite an interesting one. Now, they've actually been released on bail uh, earlier uh, today, so they're out on bail. But the police are maintaining they have footage, CCTV footage, of these two particular individuals meeting up with the people that vandalized uh, the uh, Emerald Buddha wall the day before. So this is why they're saying that these people were involved and possibly maybe this was staged or something for them to be able to get the photo. But nevertheless, the police do have footage and they've shared the CCTV footage um, on the Internet, just still pictures, I mean, of the reporter and the photojournalist meeting with the people who did it the night before. So there is something a little bit suspicious about all of this. But uh, nevertheless, I'm sure the police will get to the bottom of it. Again, we are seeing more and more people here in the country being prosecuted under the Less Majeste law. That's the 112 law. And of course, the uh, Computer Crimes Act, which has been used to suppress uh, people's uh, freedom of expression here in Thailand for quite a while. But 
as you can see, it has continued. There is a bit of an uproar within the media about this because they're saying basically if they just covered the event and there was no involvement with 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 these guys, why would they be held responsible and why would they be charged with less majeste uh, in relation to it? So I guess we'll probably find out more. But I do think it's a significant development that CCTV footage of the two meeting with the people who defaced um, the, the uh, Emerald Buddha wall the night before is very, very significant. But we'll move on to the final story of today, and that's the Thai cabinet extends the Songkran holiday. Now, just as you think it couldn't get any longer, yes, it can. In a bid to stimulate tourism during the upcoming Songkran festival, the Thai cabinet has approved the addition of a special public holiday on April 12th, 2024. The decision extends the traditional Songkran holiday period to five days, running from April 12th to 16th. News reports following the cabinet meeting indicate that the Intention behind this move is to provide an extra day off to boost tourism and, econ and the economy during the Songkran holiday. With the approval of this special holiday, Songkran celebrations in Thailand will now officially span five days from April 12th to 16th. The Thai government anticipates that the extended break will further energize the tourism sector, building upon earlier efforts to establish Songkran as a key economic driver. Now, meanwhile, the overall period of Songkran events throughout the country will span 21 days, but that doesn't mean 21 days of water fights everywhere. That's according to the government. So another extra holiday for the Songkran, so they're going to say it's going to be a five-day holiday. Now, what's always interesting about these holidays that the government give, these extra holidays you see pop up, if we've decided to do this or do this, is that the average working man doesn't get them. These holidays are mainly taken up by the government because most businesses have already planned out for the year the public holidays that they're giving to their staff and if you take examples of this we'll be in the hospitality industry where you've thousands and thousands of workers and they have what's called leave sheets in hotels and the public holidays for the year have already been decided and they don't give these extra holidays and the same with many many other businesses throughout the country as i said the only ones who really ever benefit from these additional holidays are government workers so it's always to spur the government workers to have a little more time off as if they do i think one of the most indebted people in this country are government workers so the idea that they need more time to spend more money i think is a little nonsensical at times but I do understand where they're coming from. I mean, it would be one thing if this was a holiday where they said, look, the five days off is that everybody must get this holiday. I'm not saying everybody must be off, but you get the day in lieu. If you have to work that day, you'll get that day back in the future where you can have another day off. And then you kind of have a spiral effect of people having additional days off in the year where they will spend money and you know uh, contribute to the economy. But in this kind of case, it'll be... Basically, I think people really enjoy Songkran for about three three days. And after that, they're kind of getting a little bit fed up, fed up with it. Now, the 21 days they're talking about, this is all part of the Peitong Taran Shinawatra Soft Power Committee. There has actually been no information as to what will be going on for these 21 days they assure everyone it'll not be water fights everywhere that'll be cultural activities and festivals and stuff like that so that'll be very interesting to see if that uh, pops up and how that works i know that this committee were seeking an enormous amount of money but they were told by the prime minister you're not getting it because simply the money's not there and they couldn't condone that kind of spend um, again trying to attach it to soft power to give themselves something to do and to condone the committee, I think, is more to the point. Uh, I'd like to see maybe a bit more thought, you know, instead of thinking, oh, well, how can we have a party for 21 days? Oh, it's going to boost the economy. It only boosts the economy in certain areas. There's a lot of parts of this country that have nothing to do with tourism and need, uh, you know, a little knee up and a little empowerment within their economies to kind of spur them on. But sometimes a lot of these events are only focused in major tourist hubs, which seems to be unfortunately the case in many times. But folks, that is it for today. As always, hope you enjoy, enjoyed the show. We'll see you probably tomorrow morning with another show. Thanks for tuning in and stay tuned and uh, for the, uh, the next uh, show in relation to whether or not you can buy property here in Thailand and actually property research. So anyway, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you again. Take care and bye-bye. 
But ultimately, with this story or anything else that stood out to you today, I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments down below. Because yes, this is a new show, but it's also a conversation. Now keep that conversation going. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, share the video, and do all the good stuff that does help that YouTube algorithm. But ultimately, my name is Kieran Mack. You've been listening to the Thai Expat Daily Show, and we will see you next time.